Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and Part 20 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Squad 77 has a little downtime and then faces accusations of murder as they are sent to Jericho's London headquarters. Welcome everybody, this is episode 20 of the uh, Jericho Squad 77, and we're not going to do a recap of last time because a lot of this episode is going to be recap. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. the way it's built today so um we'll just kind of jump right in when you, when you got back uh you're you're back home and you were able to take a long rest so everybody can click that if you haven't done it already uh, yeah in in the Let's morning see. over waffles uh bentley kind of lets you know hey uh you guys have a few days but um london headquarters wants to see all of us Okay. They're going to send I'm... somebody over to watch our transport, and we're all going over there. I understand. Yeah, so... so that What are we doing there? Uh, well, we haven't really kept them very well up to date on what's been going on with us, so <clears throat> they want to they wanna get kind of a recap of everything that's happened with us. I think... I might be in trouble. I don't know. I don't know if I've been a very good leader. Because of the damage that happened to the base and because of the stuff that happened? I mean, we were up against some pretty serious enemies. <laughs> no. No, not, it's not about the base. It's, um, it's about the way I've been fooled by Cassius Breyer and some of the stuff that you guys have done while you've been away. Well, I can vouch for you anytime. Thanks, but I think it's probably my fault, so I don't want you guys to take the blame for me. Yeah, uh, but we, we did a pretty together. good job cleaning it up, though. I mean, we contained it. Not too much collateral damage, I'd say. And I think it really brought us together as a team, so I, I say we stick. we all stick together, no matter what. Well, you, I mean, you guys burned down a warehouse that belonged to Cassius Breyer and... He kidnapped my brother. Yeah. I think all yeah. things considered, we did pretty good, right, guys? Absolutely. You know, if anything, like, he's uh... been trying to undermine Jericho's squad as a whole. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think that you should be, or any of us should be at fault. Sure, things have gotten out of hand, but I mean, that's not our intent. Well, I sent him yeah. to hell and I'd do it again. I wonder where he is now. Hopefully in hell. One of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah, you guys have five days um, to do whatever you want to do to prepare, or if you've got any other things that you want to do with your five days, you can do that. Five yeah. days noise. Hey, sure, leave. 
Uh, I think I'm going to go over to the Arithmetic Kasparit for a couple of those days and kind of meditate and study some books, see if I can okay. find it in spells. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to hang out with my brother for a while. And then I'll be back here two days to spare. If you guys need any help, I'll help around the base. Okay. Uh, what's everybody else want to do? We'll, we'll, we'll go to that after we get everybody else's plans. I want to get some new ink while I'm here. I want to get something that represents my journey into the new dominions. Oh, I was thinking like you're going to go like buy a bottle of ink. <laughs> oh, some tattoos. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Snack boxes, lots of snack boxes because we're always hungry. So okay. I'll be, I'll be cooking. <laughs> All right. Cooking. Okay. Musette. What is Musette going to do? My okay, and and Ralph, what's Ralph for the whole do? five days? Deep clean, clean. clean? Ralph okay. is gonna sleep and eat. Okay, all right, fair enough. Or are you b making snacks? You're gonna. I'm cook. making snacks. I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> okay. Mm, so I smell the that Cajun spice. Yeah. Um, make an investigation check. Who are you asking that to, uh, Lori? Yes. Yeah, for, okay. for Zoe. She's investigating the kitchen. Oh, I only got a four. <laughs> oh, okay. So unfortunately, it seems like it's been a long time since anybody's gone to the to the um, to the store or bought anything. So you might need to. There might need to be some shopping done. You you could send um, bustle and pancake to go shopping. You don't have to do it yourself. That well. Is that a good idea? <laughs> they've, they've been doing it for a while now. Okay, go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you could give, you can even give them a list of uh, things. Yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, okay. we we just we just need some stuff for like jerky, because jerky lasts a long time and doesn't need to be refrigerated. Okay. We have or muscle and pancake for jerky. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, culinary joke there. Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on the kill. Ralph is in favor of that idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he would. Okay. He starts sniffing around bustle and pancake. Okay. And so, um, Richard, you're going out into the city to, uh, into his order X to look for a tattoo shop? I'm trying to find something that might be able to give me like I said, a representation of my journey here because I've never, okay. I've never actually crossed over into any of the other dominions until until now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. And and at so, the same time, I also want to resupply uh, anything that I might be lacking as far as you know, cigarettes, dental picks, uh, anything that's gonna that's gonna be a fixation for like up here. So okay. I also want to just see the sights. Want to see you know, Exordiac Exordorexian life and culture and cuisine i just want to spend like a kind of like a little like he said in a shore leave okay all right well uh yeah make an investigation check also it's because you're kind of asking around and and looking around oh that's pretty good yeah yeah with a 19 uh even though you're you know, it seems like that some things are written in English and some things aren't, but you're kind of able to use context clues to figure out your way around. And Isorder X is huge. And it seems like it's in it's built in sort of stair steps. And I'll put the map up here. Uh, with the remains of sort of the former government uh, being up near the top. There we go. So you are in the. Uh, We're just seeing a black screen. Oh, there it is. You're in the upper area there. See the seven wonders of the Imagica. That's your. Uh, that's your storefront, of the of your base there. In the right next to the bureaucratic Casparade. And so you're kind of in a governmental uh, subsection there. And, and the higher you go up the hill, the more, you know, the, 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 historically, the more governmental it's been. 
Um, but you know, it's it's also become more democratic uh, since 30 years ago when the autark was deposed. Uh, so. Um, so as I'm making my way through the city, is there anybody who's trying to like uh, approach me or reach out to me? Any sort of like uh, anybody trying to lead me or guide me or trying to interest me in anything? Well, you 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 do yeah you you see all kinds of shops people and salespeople. I mean anything that you want to get, you should be able to, to find. Oh, but it's gonna it'll it'll take time. The city's pretty well spread out and. The area you're in is uh, is kind of more in between artists and and uh, and governmental stuff. So you're you're the area we're in that you're in now. You're more most likely to find a tattoo place here. Okay, and then uh, Churdevir is going down through down to the Eretimic Kesperate. Yeah, yeah. He's he's heading to the Eretimic Kesperate all the way down on Kesper. the southwest there. I got my library there. Yeah. I, I can hook you up with a library card if you want. <laughs> I want a library card, please. All right. I'm the head librarian. Yeah. Oh. I'll get you a card. <laughs> Getting nice. into the library is going to be a lot easier than getting into the Casperit itself. Because you're supposed to be a Uretimic to be able to, to even get through the gates. Unless, well, you know... Unless well, Trudel you can come with... You yeah, yeah, with an Uretimic, you'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'd like to go down there, too. But you've got your phones. You know, you can call if you want to. If you feel yeah. Right there. Am I already left the building, or are we just... Is it already like the first day that we're? Yeah, yeah, a, we're we're in the month? first day. You're you're kind of uh, you're kind of wandering okay. around. I'm in the library. If you want to call me and stop okay. by, we, I can I can make sure you get a pass. Yeah. Oh heck yeah. Um, it's pretty far walk. I think for this first day, I kind of want to just stick around where I you know where I know I can get back. But I definitely want to start uh, kind of spiraling around towards the center of this little locale looking for anything that like like you said that might uh, look like tattoo body art body modification anything like that i'm trying to find some people that are in those areas so like you said i'm okay. in that in that zone up there in the north maybe and try to find one that's point. enchanted absolutely i know i'm in, yeah. a, in a magical place so hopefully i could get something that has some uh some magical qualities. It would be nice you, if it would be nice if I could try to find a spell. Like if you just got a, like some kind of regular tattoo, if I was able to enchant it to do something, that's no. something to, to think about too later on. I want something that I can use my tattoos to attack with, uh, or or defend with. Well, and you've got one now that that uh, gives you defense, right? I think it increases your armor class. But I think it uses yeah, up one of your one of your attune. Yeah, it uses up one of your three attunement slots. Mm -hmm. So if you had another tattoo like that, it would take the place of a, of a magic item or something that would also be an an attunement slot. But yeah. Um, you you get through four or five uh, tattoo parlors before you find one that's kind of in more of a dingy back room area, um, and uh, and there's an an older uh, older woman there that 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 uh, comes out of the out of a beaded curtain and uh, says, "Yeah, what do you want?" Basically, I'm startled a little bit by her bluntness and I'm like oh excuse me my apologies is this a tattoo parlor I ask her she she looks at you and and uh, is your your uh, is your magic tattoo visible I've got a lot of tattoos so I mean I don't think my magic one is I want to just assume it's on my back okay she she looks at your other tattoos and she says you're not from here are you 
I'm from a lot of places, but definitely not from here. But what I do want is to get something from here. And this kind of seems like the place that I might be able to get something a little bit more than just what you see on my arms right here. You know, is there anything unique you might be able to offer? She she looks up. She looks at your. Uh, can I see? And she she uh, wants to look at your tattoos. So I proffer my arms to her, and mm -hmm. uh, it shows kind of just some nautical stuff, um, military kind of themed. I just have like a bunch of like as you can see i got some tribal tattoos on my arms and stuff nothing that really means anything but uh the tattoo from my back kind of slips over onto my shoulder a little bit so maybe she can oh, okay. see a little bit of that coming through so she looks at the ones on your arms first and she says who is your tattoo artist for these this is not this is fairly basic but it's not an artist i recognize oh it's just somebody from back home uh, Nobody says, wait, special. Wait, what's this? And she points at the one on your shoulder. Oh, this little guy right here? This is, yeah, uh, what is that? this one's a little bit more powerful. This is actually a totem kind of... It's got some magical qualities. It's a barrier tattoo. I can kind of see that. So I just take my shirt off. Since I'm not kind of rocking whatever vests that I would normally be wearing, I just have like my regular vestments on. So I just take my shirt off and expose my upper back and uh, let her see the tattoo that I have. I'm all ripped and stuff. Ooh. He says, This is impressive. My back or the tattoo? The tattoo. I've never seen anything like this before, and I'm no one else in his order X does this kind of work. And I know I didn't do it, so who did this? I, I couldn't tell you that. I've been sworn to secrecy. And in, 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 in memory failure. I understand. Well, I just so you know, I would forget also, but I'm just professional curiosity. Oh, uh, from somebody in the Fifth Dominion, somebody who's pretty uh, powerful. That you know, I suspected that you were from the Fifth Dominion. Yes, ma'am. Is there any any way you could put you know? put a tattoo on me that holds power maybe not like the one I have here but just in the same fashion that this tattoo holds power I think I have something in mind but it's expensive I have a t I have one here that can absorb uh, injuries of a specific type so let's say someone attacks you with acid or cold fire force damage, or lightning, or necrotic, or poison, or psychic damage that hurts your brain, or radiant, or thunder. But you'd have to pick one. The type of damage you pick will will uh, will choose the color of the tattoo. I just take a moment and I say, let me, let me consider, let me consider this for just a moment. That's a lot of options as presented with that uh, alignment or that, that line up there of elements that I could be resistant towards. It's not a hundred percent exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah, and for simplicity's sake, um, right. we use uh, when when somebody says thirty thousand, there is orderexian coins, but it's kind of a one to one ratio for U.S. dollars and and uh, and Great Britain pounds because I don't want to do conversion. You know what, Miss? I'm here for the next couple of days. What I want to do, 
is I want to take in some of the nightlife and, and take in some of the culture around here before I make any commitments. But I definitely am interested in this. Um, in this. Is it all right if I come back and see you in a couple days? Uh, yes. I have more tattoos, too, that I can share with you. All things considered, like I said, I might not need a powerful tattoo. I do want to get some tattoos regardless. I would definitely employ you for that. Okay. As far as whether or not I want to attune to some new magic. Let me consider this over the next couple of days and I'll be back. And Fair I enough. Out. Okay. Uh, and uh, Chirdovir. Yes. So you did you go to the library first or did you try to find uh, Drovo first? I went to the library first. I've been hanging okay. out there for like today. Okay. And what did you just want to looking, do at the library? I just looking through some tomes, um, some rare tomes, trying to find anything that might. Uh, so I don't know exactly how this works, but I was trying to find something that would help me um, communicate with hell. Oh, okay. And. Uh, it's kind of hard. I found a lot of like old uh, Fifth Dominion tomes that talk about some stuff, uh, some rare tomes from the Fifth. I found Big Anzoli's collection of Vatican Apocrypha. I found Brander's Urtexts and uh, Sanderegger's Cruelties, but uh, they're all just showing me that uh, people are really terrible in the Fifth Dominion to each other. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, well, one thing that that uh, I mean, y you would also know that you have a a device, you know, your your sending stone, basically that other people use as a cell phone case, but you don't have a cell phone. You just use the sending stone, and anyone that you've met or that you know, you can contact them by just picturing them in your mind. I mean, it helps to have a photograph of them, but if you've seen them enough, you can talk to them by just picturing them in your mind. So if you wanted to talk to yeah, I guess I I can contact them if I yeah. focus on them. Yeah. With the sending stone. Was that something they gave me? I forgot. No, no, you you were issued that by Jericho. Oh yeah, you're talking about yeah, the, the special phone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I didn't know that could call people interdimensionally. Yeah, well it has to yeah. be able to because even right. between dominions is interdimensional. Right, right. I just thought that that hell was like in a different outside of the magicka so i didn't know if well, I could do it, that. it is but it's it's all interdimensional okay cool then Even i do between have the, the first and the second and the fourth and the fifth and stuff okay i was i was gonna try to find out if i could uh learn more about where cassius is right now because i don't know where his soul goes to i'm guessing it goes to inside okay. the circle via magicka according to what i've learned but you know what I think I'm coming to the realization after reading all these crazy, you know, Vatican tomes and urtexts and cruelties, uh, magic books from the fifth. I'm, I'm starting to think it's better to just lay off the infernal stuff. It was weird having like fly eyes. Yeah, right. For a while. It right. was really weird. <laughs> so Magera was the uh, was the, the fury that you met. And I'm trying yes. to remember the other one's name. I would like to learn a ref refresh on how to properly uh, do a magic spell to protect and secure our base, though. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so do I do an investigation check or something? Because uh, yeah, yeah. the last time yeah. I did it, it looks like it didn't work. Yeah, d well, right, right. Yeah, so do an investigation on... Uh, it, you're looking through your books to try to find the perfect spell to, uh, to, to protect the so, base. Arcana or investigation? Uh, investigation, yeah, because Arcana right. would be do, would be learning magic, but investigation. Hey, look at that! To find the right book. I got a twenty-two. Wow! Yeah. Fifteen plus seven. Yeah, yeah. So you you found um. So, do, how in what way do you want to protect the? Do you want to do try to do the same thing again? Yes, or I want to something different. Put a, Put a spell that lets anybody that's authorized to go in and out of the house okay. or open the door, but no, but people who are not, you know, yeah. 
supposed to be in there, they can't go through the door. Okay. It'll be like steel to them. So, so you basically you went back to the same book and and you look at, at the same spell again and you realize that you made harder a colossal, this time. You made a colossal mistake last time that you didn't even realize, and yeah, you completely ov overlooked this other mistake and you didn't even know that you'd done it, and and yeah. it's like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Uh, but now you you're pretty sure you know how to do it, and that that next time it'll it'll work correct. Okay, I'm gonna plan for uh, locking the door and put it magically locked. The next time I'm back at the base, and uh, other stuff I've just been doing is just you know hanging out with with my books, you know, taking sniffing the shelves and uh, just cleaning cleaning the dust out of, out of the the desk and just uh, enjoying a little bit of quiet downtime in my library. Okay. And and uh, were you gonna also talk to Drovo? Yes. So after two days of this, I stop by Drovo's house in the Kesperit and I knock on the door and go, Hey brother, you there? Ah, ah, sure do here. It's good to see you. It's been a while. You've been yes, through brother. some harrowing times. I've been waiting for your update on uh, Darth City. What happened there? So, unfortunately, I don't have good news, brother. It looks like almost everybody at Durther City was uh, killed. So, it looks like we had to... Uh, they were trying to bring back the wings of the Unbeheld. Um, they were bringing... They were using the, the tripart uh, spell to try to bring back uh, Peximendios, or at least you know, try to try to see if they could tap into his power. Did, did you see and, the uh, bodies of, of the people? Uh, well, from what I remember, I think they were all, they had all disappeared, right? Yeah. Yeah, disappeared without trace, but there were uh, signs of violence and signs of, you know, um, that they were taken against their will and that uh, there was blood spatters here and there. So I don't think they... Um, I don't think they had a good ending, unfortunately. Is it possible they could be alive somewhere? Um, we could go back and investigate. I mean, it seemed pretty definitive. It seemed like, you know, so right. Just so I remember, didn't we see like signs that they had died? Or was it you just... saw you saw signs of struggle? And, and overturned furniture and some blood and stuff, but you didn't see any bodies. Yeah, but um, so you know how it is. We had to fight a giant Nullianac, and you know what Nullianacs do to people. They kind of vaporize them. So, I mean, it is possible if we go back to Durther City and try to investigate um, further and see if, um, if we have missed any hints. But from what I could tell, I think that they might have been used as fodder um, in whatever ritual they were doing there. Uh, at least Cassius Briar is dead. He is? Yes. Well, he, uh, was, he, had, he was already dead. Well, he had been transported to... I've just been reading about this in my tower. He had been transported into uh, a Fifth Dominion spiritual dimension called Hell. Um what you know about the strange deals that I had to get into to protect myself. Um, I know you disapproved of it, but he was not completely defeated. He was able to come back and uh, he actually overtook a actual squad from Jericho and under false identity, he was um, trying to work uh, his plans uh, by abusing the trust of some Jericho squad. So actually Jericho squad 78 and unfortunately, um, yeah, some of them died, um, and we had to we had to expose him, and then we were able to defeat him. Who who did he uh, take over? So he took over. Uh, it was this. He disguised himself. He used a very nasty spell where he could put someone else's skin on. And he did that. Uh, he disguised himself as an Arethamek. It was uh, Oskalok. Oskalok, yeah. yeah. He, he he murdered Oskalok and he um, took his oh. skin. That's terrible. And he was, news. It is, yeah. 
I know that, that uh, I liked... we didn't really get along with Oskalok, but it's always bad news when one of ours is is murdered because there are so few. That's true. That's another uh, horrible act of death and destruction that Cassius Briar is responsible for, and finally we brought him to justice. At least that's a little comfort. How are you doing, brother? Well, uh, this is this is bad news for me. You, you know that my office was meant to be in Darther City. Uh, as the representative of the First Dominion, that's where I was supposed to set up. Um, because you can't have an office in the First Dominion, so that's where I was going to be. And now it's, well, if if there's no people there, I, you know, and it's dangerous, I don't know, I don't know what I can do. I'll just, and, and to be honest, I was going to, I was called uh, to this meeting in London in a few days uh, to be updated with the rest of the, the Reconciled Council on, mm -hmm. on the, you were going to report on what happened in Darthur City, but I'm glad that you told me now. Yes, unfortunately, it was a. Uh, it seems like it had great loss of life, but we were able to stop their ritual, so we don't have to worry about them bringing in any echoes of Apexamendios back into the Imagica. The dead god will remain dead. But so okay, so Drovo. Unfortunately, we have defeated the hand of the Unbeheld, the wings of Apexamendios, but we still haven't come to the heart of the Aboriginal. So we spoke with a magic entity and they warned us that if those three uh, things came together, that we would be in very serious trouble. And uh, I think we should do our best to find out who is the heart of the Aboriginal. Uh, I, that, yes, I'm hoping that your squad can investigate that then. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll go and tell the council what's going on and what happened in Durthra City, and then um, we'll also see what they have to say to take in consideration. Well, so where would the heart be? That's a good question. Um, I think we'll have to... Maybe we'll have to go back to Durthra City to try to investigate... Uh, what's going on? I don't know. We'll have to talk to the council and see if they have any insight on who the heart of a, uh, an Aboriginal could be. I mean... Aren't they relying on you to find that out? Uh, well, I guess they're relying on Jericho. Yeah, they, so... they were in fact trying to recruit me because I had the Boston Bowl and then they got you instead with the Boston Bowl. So couldn't you use that to find yes. your answer? That's a good idea. Uh, we used the Boston Bowl last time to see what was coming our way with the Squad 80, 78 that said they were going to take over from us. So we looked into that and that's when we realized that something was wrong. Uh, that some of the members were not who they seemed to be. Um, there were some crazy, crazy events going on like you know, we remember. Um, uh, you remember the seagull that we used to have, uh, Jonathan Seagull. Sort of. he, he's unaccounted for. I don't know what happened with him. Um, and then we got a, a new person. We got a new member, uh, Richard. Uh, he's he's been very useful. He's a weapons expert, and uh, he's been helping us a lot. Um, so. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll have to re rejoin and regroup and talk about what, what we, what's the next step we can do to find the heart of the Aboriginal. Well, uh, yes, I, I hope that you can soon. I hope so too, brother. Disturbing news. Yes, very disturbing. So we'll see you in London? Uh, yeah, yes, I'll, I'll be there with the rest of the council. 
That's good to know. From what I understand, there's a part uh, in the beginning that I won't be privy to. There. Okay. There's what classified do you mean? Jericho business at the beginning, that we so we have to kind of wait outside the door. Oh, and like then, for your own protection. Yeah, and then we come in, and we talk about uh, reconciled, um, reconciled business. Okay, and, I think there there must be a disciplinary hearing opening that. So I guess that's why you guys are not. Uh, they're not going to make you look at that. Oh, you mean the thing with the the murder in in the fourth dominion? Well, I mean something with our with our squad leader uh, Bentley. Oh, I I don't know about that. I know that there was a murder in the Fourth Dominion, right? Didn't one of you guys you shot somebody who had their hands up? That's what I heard. Uh, okay. Well, we'll have I, to. I understand yeah. the Patashquin government is really upset, and they want justice for that. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so that's the well, that's the third part after our, we're done. Okay. Well, I, ha I guess we'll have to deal with the consequences of that and explain any um, any um, attenuating circumstances. I mean, you know, I'm your brother. You know, we don't do anything without a good reason. Yeah. Uh, well, we seem to be in the habit of um, public uh, battles, you know, taking yes. our private Jericho business and putting it out in front of everybody. Well, when things take the proportions and the scale that they have, it's kind of hard to keep it secret, you know? Hmm. I, you know, I ask you to take that into consideration. I mean... We've been dealing with very, very powerful entities and very, very um, well thought of plans. And so it's it's kind of hard to keep those things secret, especially when they break into a ceremony, a voting ceremony uh, that's being televised. You know, I mean, that was that was really no way. Would, would you have rather we just done nothing and then Cassius Breyer would have taken over the council? I mean, that's. We no, I I don't I don't fault you for that, but it's it's cast a pallor of suspicion over me and my appointment. You know, m my brother killed my opponent on on television. Who tried to kill you and try to kill the council? I mean, no, I know I know all of that stuff, but it's you right. know it's never gonna not be a thing that comes up every time I I speak or or you know talk to anyone. Drovo, we live in an age where some of that stuff you just can't control. Some of that stuff, there's always going to be people when you're in a position of power that are not going to like you. There's always going to be things that they're going to be said about you. Um, unfortunately, that's that's the name of the game. You know that your Ethemex have a particularly litigious and uh, internally um, dramatic uh, political life. I mean, you know how it is. Well, this is a little bit unprecedented, though, brother. I mean, you have to admit. I agree with that. I agree. But again, I, I have to bring the scale and the scope of the threat into consideration. So, you know, I mean, everything will have to be talked over with the council, but I'm sure that everything will, will come out the other side and uh, we'll be in the right. Yeah. But don't tell them I said anything about I'm not, you know, I'm not of supposed course. to be. I mean, you're my yeah. brother. I would never put you on the spot or expose you for anything. Yeah, and and the, I'm I have to recuse myself in those kinds of matters. Uh, I can't. I think it's a good know, idea. I yeah. I think that is a good idea. And I, I, you know, we were this close to to me being in your place they were trying to recruit me and that just, that is true that is true i went me on one path and you on another yeah that's just the way it is i, I think you would have had some issues juggling your jericho 
position with your current position as representative of the first. Oh, I think it would have been impossible. Yeah. So in that, in that, actually, it kind of worked out a bit uh, that way. I think you will do a lot more good for the Imagica um, by helping keep it safe and, uh, you know, keep it under control mm. in a oh, democratic way. I hope so. I know you will. You're my brother, and I trust you implicitly. Well, I thank you for the visit. And I guess of we'll I'll, I'll see you again here on in uh, in just a, a few days. I'll see you in the time that the comet takes to go around the sky three times. Yeah. May the goddesses be with you, Drovo, and protect you. And you. I, 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 I touch my silken sword and go like this. That's like our greeting. Yeah, he does the same. Aw, that's great. World building. So for Richard, uh, any, any, anything else that you want to do before, the, before heading back? Yeah, I want to call up uh, Churivir. <clears throat> Okay. Get that library card. <laughs> All right. And I also want to run them, run by them a couple of the options that I was presented with over at the tattoo parlor. Yeah. Call me. So I I call Chertevere and let it ring until he answers. <laughs> uh, I can't say Jericho Squad seventy seven. How can I help you? <laughs> yeah. It's basically you just hear his, you yeah. hear him in your mind. Yeah, I know. I go like, yeah. "Hi, Richard. How can I help you?" Hey, man, can I get that library card? Absolutely. Let me just uh, get out of the uh, tower. I'll meet you at the gates of the Kesperit, and uh, I'll I'll bring you in. I'm All on right, my I'll way be now. There uh, in a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you in a bit. All right. So I head on down to the Kesperit, and I'm looking for Chertevere. Richard. I... Hey, what's going on, bud? <laughs> hey, come to see where I work? Yeah, uh, this is where uh, you said you're the library master here? I am, yes. Uh, master let me... librarian? Yeah, uh, I can uh, I can take you to uh, the place where I used to work before I joined, well, I still work there, before I joined Jericho 77. Um, let's, uh, let me just ask you one thing, just, you know, make sure you don't... Um, Make sure you kind of make yourself a little inconspicuous. Uh, the security here can be a little tight, and they don't like outsiders very much. But I wouldn't take that personally. It's just you know we've been we've been almost driven to extinction many many ages ago, and ever since then we've always kind of had this um, protective thing about our culture and our places. And um, so the security can be a little uptight, but if you're with me, you're fine. Let's let's uh, let's head on down this way. And you see that big building in the distance with a tower? That's that's the library. Well, I feel so honored and most honored to be here with you, Chertevere. Thank you for extending the invitation to show me uh, show me your home. Well, we're blood brothers now. I mean, you've saved my life. I would probably saved your life. So you know, it's it's just uh, I consider you to be your ethnic kin right now, and so like everybody else in the, the Jericho squad. Oh, my heart swells with pride, and I, <laughs> I follow your. That. All right, the welcome to the library. All right, so, um, did you I have anything you for... wanted to uh, look for? I just want to, like, like I said, I just wanted to take it all in. Uh, and then while I've got you here, um, run by the opportunity that I was presented with over at this tattoo parlor earlier uh, the other day. Um, she had some tattoos, and the one that she was proposing to me was an elemental resistance tattoo uh, mm -hmm. where I got to choose um, which element it would be semi-resistant to. So um, basically, it was a list of every element available. I just didn't mm -hmm. know if that was something you think I should do because I've got three attunements three attunement slots right now and uh, what I have is a barrier tattoo a ring of protection and Cassius Briar's old sword all three of those are attuned 
Okay, that's good. That's good. That sword is very powerful. <clears throat> um, I'm aware. Yeah. So what what are the tattoos that you have there? Well, I have one tattoo that um, has some sort of attunement to it. It's a barrier tattoo, and. So what does well, that do? Does that uh, does that give you, you like uh, your own barrier around you? It says while you aren't wearing armor, the tattoo grants you an armor class of fifteen plus your dexterity modifier, um, maximum of plus you. two. You can use a shield and still gain this benefit. But my armor class is eighteen. I don't know if it's coming from this tattoo. Or I also have that ring of protection. Oh, so does the tattoo not helping because you're wearing armor? I think so. A lot of times, yeah, a lot of times things, it's like some of this stuff is like either or. Like you put, add something like that and it's like, well, you can either have the tattoo or you're going to have armor, but not both. Because you can't stack them? Yeah. Okay. No, I've got plus five unarmored bonus because of my barrier tattoo. So that's giving me an armor class of 18. So right, but that's an unarmored bonus. So if you're wearing armor, that disappears. Yeah, but I'm not wearing armor. Well, at this point, I'm seeing the, the benefit of not having it, so might as well yeah. just keep it where it's at because that barrier tattoo okay. is doing quite a bit for me. Yeah. Delete. Boom. Yeah, I also you, have Magical you, you, Dagger 1 and Magical Dagger 2. I think those are things that we scooped up from those guys at the... Either at the circus or at to Darthur City. Oh, they need to be identified then. Okay. Well, since we're here at the library, do you think you could help me identify these items, Chervir? I I I can try. Yeah, I got some uh, some some uh, books here that might have uh, information. Um, if you want, do you, what uh, do you have? So the what items do you have? Do you have the identify spell? Identify your, spell. Yeah, in your spell book. Let me check. So let me go to my spell book. Sorry, I'm working with a Chromebook today, so it's a little harder to juggle all the windows in a small Chromebook. Spells. Okay, so looking at it, uh, is that a spell itself? Identify yeah. spell? Yep. I do not, in fact, have identify spell. So where did the, where did these magic daggers come from? I think it came from when we killed or knocked out the big hulking beast that was there at the at Darthur City. I also left my uh, handcuffs on them. Oh, whoever we left handcuffs, oh, we the, ended up from the hand. all those guys. Okay, wow, yeah, that was a, and, yeah, you guys uh, waited a long time to identify those things. <laughs> when I just was looking at my inventory. I, I didn't realize it scrolls down. Turtovir, are you gonna are you gonna copy that? spell into your spell book um which one the identify spell yeah are you... well can i just do that it'll Don't take a long to... time it, it that that that's that process will take a long time it'll take hours okay there we go everybody there we go okay all right so you're so so i just prepared that identify a, magic yeah and so that that took you um that took you two hours to transcribe that into your spell book. Uh, but now it felt it's like it. Yeah. In real time. Awesome. That's going to be a useful thing for me. I should have done that before. Yeah. I mean, if there's other spells that you want to learn, you can do them that way. And then you, every morning you can switch which uh, spells are prepared for the day. And that's how wizards okay. are different from other uh, casting classes. Right, right. I knew that. Okay, and um, and actually, for a cleric, they they have access to every spell that there is, and you can switch those every morning. You know, by you're supposed to, you're praying, right, and you're switching all the spells that you want to cast for the day. So you can do that that's, too. That's right. So. Uh, I've got the identify thing. So going back to Richard, what does he want me to identify? What do you want me to identify for you? Oh, yes, please. Um, I have these. He, he fell asleep while that was going on. <laughs> I was trying to read some of these books, but they're in a language I can't understand. But I was looking at some of the pictures. However, I've got. It can be uh, pretty cool. 
back back when we were down there at Darth or City and we tied up that guy and we looted him, I picked up these two magical daggers and a set of bracers. But I was just wondering if you could identify these daggers. Yes. Let me see if I can perform this as a ritual. Okay. And I'm going to... Give me the daggers. May I have the daggers? Yes, here you go. Thank you. I put them on the table on my very, very dusty, okay. half clean desk full of tomes and rolls and parchments. And I perform identify as a ritual. Okay. All right. So the first dagger uh, you identify is called a dagger of venom. Ooh, and nice. uh, so basically what it does is you get a plus, it's plus one to attack and you can, um, it's got a thick coat of poison on it, and you can um, anyone you hit with it must has to make a, a Constitution saving throw of fifteen, or take two d ten poison damage on top of the dagger's damage. Was uh, it ten? What was that? Two d two? Yeah, two d ten poison damage. Okay. Yeah, and, you know so... you don't have to write all that down because what if whoever takes it, we can just add it into their inventory. Well, I awesome. put it in my inventory for now, just as a placeholder. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to actually put it in your in your inventory. I, I you can't did. I did it right it. this time. Okay. And then I deleted so when the... Magical Dagger one. And they take the poison condition for one minute. So was the what does the poison condition imply? Are they moving slower? Or are they just losing points? What No, uh, yeah, I think do they have disadvantage. It? It's like disadvantage on stuff. Let's see. There's a there's conditions. Okay. Poisoned Says, is uh, uh it's disadvantage on attack on rolls and ability checks. There you go. Yeah, for one minute. So which is, is a, it would it's just ten ten rounds in combat. It says a poison remains for a minute or until attack weapon or uh, or until an attack using this weapon hits a creature, a creature must succeed on a DC fifteen constitution saving throw or take two D ten poison damage and become poisoned for one minute. The dagger can't be used this way again until next down. Yeah. We well, gotta redip it. What about this other dagger? Uh, yeah. So that for another ten minutes, you you uh, you find the dagger of warning. Warning. Yeah. This is the dagger of warning. I'm getting that from my uh, identify spell. Yeah. While the weapon's on your person, you have advantage on initiative rolls. So that means when you roll initiative, you can roll twice and take the higher number. And in addition. You and any of your companions within 30 feet of you can't be surprised, except when incapacitated by something other than non-magical sleep. The weapon magically awakens you and your companions when uh, within range if you're sleeping uh, naturally when combat begins. Like an alarm. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It well, gives you advantage on, really awesome, the advantage actually. on initiative is really nice. And uh and that you can't be surprised is also really good. Using it as a weapon in combat is not so great, but just having it on you is really good. So Richard, this is the dagger of poison, this is the dagger of warning. Can I get you something to drink? Wow, these are really nice finds. We should uh, share this with the with the rest of of Jericho Squad. See if anybody can make some use out of them. Um, but uh, after we went ahead and broke down my entire build, I appreciate the the input. I think I'm going to pass on on one of them tattoos this time around uh, because I'm actually getting quite the benefit from the the barrier tattoo as a wondrous item. Sure, but. Uh, yeah, man. I um, appreciate you doing all that for me and showing me around. I'm going to head back over to town. I uh, spend my last few days trying to uh, just uh, live it up, have a good time. If you, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to join me if you want to show me around, show me any of the good spots in town. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just warn you to stay away from the bars that sell crouchy because that's, that's not a good thing for you to smoke. Uh, it can make you very sick. Um, but I do have some, uh, liqueur here that I got from, uh, from the, 
I've got this liqueur from the Mount of the Lipper Bayak. It was made in a little village called Beatrix. And uh, do you want to have a little drink? I say when I'm pouring myself a drink. Oh, yes, absolutely. Here you go. Enjoy. Welcome to the Urethemic Casperit, my friend. Do you just knock it back or do you sip it? Uh, I would probably sip it. If you can knock it back and hold it down, that, uh, I, you know, it, it's up to you. <laughs> All right, so I, I clank my Next glass, punch. and uh, heck yeah, so I think I'm good until we go to London. Just out of curiosity, is this closer to um, a, what, what was it, what, what is it in Hitchhiker's Guide, the um, the Gargle Blaster, or is yeah. this more like <laughs> Romulan Ale? Because I, I just want to know. I think it's just like a really, really strong, you know, you know those liquors that were made by monks in the Fifth Dominion? Um, it's kind of what this is. It's made with herbs and, and a lot of sugar, a lot of alcohol. It's a very strong liqueur. It tastes Monk a little orange. Monk yeah, hooch. Monk. Exactly. <laughs> this is the stuff the monks take over to the convent when the nuns make the pastries. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you guys have about two days left before you have to um, go to London. Londinium. Yeah. All right. Um, so I spent two days in my library. I yeah. spent a day with Drovo, and then I went back to the base for a couple of days just to hang out and uh, see if there's anybody that needs help. I do my magic spell on the okay. door. Okay. Do I need to do a, a check? Yeah, make an Arcana check. Arcana uh, this time, check. this time, make it with advantage because you studied up on the spell at the library first. I did the work. Oh, I, yeah. I definitely need advantage because I just rolled two plus seven, nine. Okay. Let's roll out one again. Oh my God. Come on. No. <laughs> I rolled an 11. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, you, it, it, you almost got it. You think that if you try again, uh, you just, if you rest up and try again, you could probably get it. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm going to go in the kitchen and have a snack. And then can I come back and try again? Yeah. yeah. But but uh, I would say you used up a, a second level spell slot. Yeah. A second level spell slot. Mm -hmm. Let me mark that as used. Okay. Boom. All right. Let me see if I can try this again. Or can I check? Mm -hmm. All right. With advantage. Yeah. Come on. Okay, now I got a 15. Yep. And all right, natural 20, 27. Okay, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, this time uh this time you feel really confident, although you did feel confident before, but uh this time feels different. Uh you think you've got it. Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I, and, I go uh, like this. Job well yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, and and just to be sure, you can have uh you can have <laughs> Richard or somebody come up and test it out. Yeah, I mean, I need someone who's not authorized to come in, though. Right. See you you can grab somebody from outside and have them try it out. Hey, you, come over here. Hey. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. Can you try to open this door for me? They, they're trying to open it, and it won't open. What's the deal? I oh, thought you were open. Is this yeah, store we open are. or not? Well, are you looking to buy something? Uh, well, you I... brought me over here. I wasn't planning on it. I'm sorry. I was just I'm a I'm a locksmith and I was just testing out if this was uh oh, properly. Oh, okay. Fixed. Thank you so much, sir. Here's a couple of shekels for your help. Oh, thank you. I don't I don't remember what the so magic of money is. Yeah. Was it dollars? Shekels. It, so it worked. Um so I would just let uh I would let Bentley and and uh, Bustle and Pancake know that during business hours they should probably prop the door open or something so people can get in. Yeah, I think Bentley has like a wedge somewhere, you know. Yeah, the doorstop is easy enough to find. He has a little bell on the door that dings when it someone moves it. Yeah. All right, so that's that's it for me. I go like, hey, Bentley, how are you doing? Are you doing okay with the upcoming uh, meeting? Uh, I have to say I'm a little nervous. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to call Aldrin. Sure. Uh, Aldrin. Oh, oh. Is this Musette? I'm just going to assume she's on 
the other line. Yeah. I'll dream. <laughs> um, so we've been called to London uh, for an investigation, and I wanted to know if you'd heard any rumblings or if you'd heard any complaints about uh, everything going on over here. Uh, hmm. Well, you won't. This is between us, right? You won't keep. You'll you'll keep my name out of out of this. Yes. Okay. Um. I didn't put a lot of stock in it, but from what I've heard, there's been a lot of um sort of running roughshod over things not following protocol not reporting back uh killing thing you know killing um innocent people were they though i did, did never mind wow Okay, that's that's a lot of allegations. I can see why we were called in. Um, I mean, are these rumors rampant? Like, if you go out, uh, you know, to like the shops or whatever. It, I, I mean, is it is it something that a lot of people are talking about? Uh, just whispers inside of the inside of management, you know. Um. Okay. I can't imagine. I keep saying, you know, I say, Musette wouldn't do that. I mean, I can't imagine. Do you, do we know if any of these people have connections with the um, Aboriginal children? Because it seems like the the followers are really, really concerned with um, tearing apart Jericho squad from the inside. I, I, wow, I hadn't thought about that. Um, wasn't it the Aboriginal children that, weren't they the ones who, who uh, wrecked squad 32, right? They were the ones who, uh, assassinated members of squad 32 and they ended up merging with you guys yes but they are been i feel like they've been infiltrating and if they were able to infiltrate one squad it's entirely possible that if the infiltration is a lot more um prevalent than we uh, are aware of hmm. Well, boy, I, I hope not. I'll see if I can find out anything. Yeah, so at this point, Aldrin says, uh, Hey, um, I've got to go, but I'll look into this and I'll see if I'll see if I can subtly figure it out. Um, maybe there's something to that. Yeah, I don't want to... Aldrin, I will not tell anybody. I do not want to put you in danger. Um, I'm just concerned that maybe some of these rumors are being, the fires are being fanned by uh, the the people behind the, um, uh, wow, my brain just blanked. The, the Aboriginal children. Uh, children of the, the Aboriginal children, yeah. So would it be possible for you to maybe uh, kind of listen out for any Aboriginal children talking points because if, if they were able to infiltrate that other squad so easily, I imagine they they were able to infiltrate uh, various squads across I, the Union. Yes, um, I'll look into that. You know, it didn't make any sense to me that you would be a murderer. I can't imagine. Well, thank you for staying on our side. Uh, probably will when we have dinner tonight, since everyone's starting to come back, uh, we will try to figure something out between all of us. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. 
All right. So has everyone made it back at this point? All right. So yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of we'll we'll kind of move on to everybody's uh, is having dinner together before um, waiting for this person to to come uh, to come gather up gather you up. What are we having? Uh, yeah, actually, that's that's uh, Lori has been working for days on making sure that you're well stocked and that you guys can eat more than just waffles. Gumbo. Oh, and awesome. Toupee. Oh, that's Love that's it. awesome. I've I've been to New Orleans once and it was uh, it was amazing. Un- unfortunately, they did not have any gators, so the closest I got is like this guy. So. Uh, oh no! <laughs> is that a, that's a ghoulie, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, use what you got. Yeah. <laughs> I I like these spices, uh, Zoe. They're really really tasty. Yeah, you bite it, it bites you. Oh yeah, it's fire. <laughs> I've heard there's something from the fifth called the paw boy, po boy. Po boy. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that that's oh that that's another thing. Um, now that everybody's back, uh, I need to ask her to beer that little pop up tent that he's got. Um. Are we able to store things inside that temporarily? Like if I have a whole bunch of jerky and stuff for our trips and stuff, am I able to put something inside that and then it squishes down like a like the you know like a Harry Potter tent? Like you're talking about the tiny hut that I have. Let me yeah. check to see what. Uh, yeah. What the is that is that a possibility? Is. Because it's it would be nice to be able to you know take care of everybody and already have that inside that little. Thing. It. It only lasts for eight hours, and it has oh. to be within ten feet of me when I uh, when I okay. when I uh, the spell leave, ends if I leave the area. So if I leave ten feet away from it, it turns itself off. So unfortunately, okay. I don't well. think that would work. Yeah. It, it, it was a thought. If you put things in there, I think they would just appear on the ground when it when it disappeared. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we well, got a vehicle though. It's, it's right? a fixed That's true. size. Yeah, it's a fixed size tiny hut bubble thing. Mm-hmm. That's true, but I, I could cook more and store it if that was a possibility, but okay. Uh, we can take our provisions with us in our backpacks. That's true. Hey, this is great. You know, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm getting a little tired of eating waffles all the time. Eat some beignets. Want some red beans and rice. Oh. Amen. <laughs> what are these beans you speak of? These beignets are good, but the powdered sugar gets all over everything. <laughs> That's part of the charm. That's kind of the Bang point, it. I think. With these yeah, things. if you wear black, it's really hard to eat these. Yes, Bentley, you're so fuzzy, you're starting to look a little more older with all that sugar, powdered <laughs> sugar on your hair. Maybe it will make me look distinguished for the yeah. thing coming up. <laughs> I think so. Ralph is in the corner chewing on a bone. He's like, I'm happy. I have my bones. Uh, uh, Ralph, do you want my, uh, do you want my shrimp tails? Ooh. Don't know if you're offering me something across the table or if that's an innuendo. Oh. Oh, no, no. I'm just talking about food. Yes, please, please. All right, right, here you go. Have, Have my crawfish, uh, tails and shrimp tails and whatever oh man this is delicious i'm just getting stuffed on all this cajun food it's amazing uh, but do we have any hot sauce because it's kind of kind of needing some heat well as best we could uh find uh they don't they don't exactly have piggly wigglies here we had to go to the <laughs> uh the closest <laughs> thing <laughs> Here in the Imagica, we get uh, we get this uh, spicy um, sauce from a fish that we catch from these waters. Um, uh, he's got an oil that's really, really hot and spicy. And sometimes it can make you see some things, but uh, that's if you have too much of it. Do we have any? Uh, back at the Casperate, yeah. Uh, well, and there, there's a... Sometimes we'll get it. In, in the, in, to the south, um, there's a wharf that has a huge market where you can find just about anything. Like it's just a big open air market kind of a thing. Oh, uh, okay. It's pretty uh, much the opposite side of the city from where you guys are, uh, through the Scorier Kesperit. Next time we're in town, we'll have to get some because that sounds higher. 
Yeah, take me with you and I'll pick a nice fresh fish. You got to look at the signs. All right. Ralph says, I want to go too. All right, you're coming with us, bud. You can't eat anything off the stands without paying for it, Ralph, okay? Well, you guys will pay for it. I will just eat it. All right. That's a deal. Ralph will try to eat the vendors. (laughs) That Jar Jar Binks scene. All right. So after, oh, yeah. you finish, <laughs> after you finish eating, the um, um, Bendley moves the table off of the transport and sets it to receive. Uh, he says it's about time they're they're uh, they're going to be sending their guy over. Basically, they have to send someone over here so that we can come back. I've got a bad feeling about this. Who's coming here? Somebody from London? Yeah. He's just going to watch the store and be sure and be uh, set it up so we can come back again. That we'll way I can go. over here to debrief on what we've been doing and potentially for you to get in trouble. He's coming here yeah, so that we can we leave. How much do trust this person? He, uh, well. Bentley, I, I'm, this is very surprising that I'm going to say this, but is there a way to ensure that Pancake and Bustle uh, will make sure that we make it back? Uh, yeah, I think now. we could call them, right? <laughs> we could call them from London. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, they're 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 here. If you want to talk to them, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> okay. Besides, they're not going to do me any favors. They're okay. not going to do me any favors. But I'm saying for the for the safety of the group, maybe you should talk to them about making sure that we don't get locked out and aren't able to come back. Because I heard it... some pretty gnarly rumors about us. Oh. Really? Oh, what? B- Bustle and Pancake, hey, uh, can come here. So that they come out of their rooms. When when the guy comes here, can you make sure that they uh, that they set it so we can come back when it's time? Oh, sure, Bentley. They uh, they say yes, of course. Yeah, we'll do that. If you're not out stealing. Keep, keep an eye on the store. Hopefully we won't be gone too long. He moves rumors? the finishes moving the table the rest of the way and and uh and he he puts uh puts up his um his sending stone and says, Okay, we're ready. And uh, a guy comes across. It's kind of a plain-looking guy. Uh, he's he's wearing um, he's wearing gray uh, sort of fatigues. Comes through. He says, "Don't worry. I'll just be here uh, to help you get back." Well, thank you. Uh... I'm Chudavir. That's Lori, Musette, Ralph, Richard, and of course Spentley. But you Ronaldo. can call me Zoe. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ronaldo. Ronaldo, well met. What does he look like, Ronaldo? Uh, he's got hey, he's got brown hair, uh, tannish skin. Cool. Average, like. Does he five speak with a British accent? Ten. No, no, he's actually American. Is he taller oh. than me? Uh, how tall are you again? Does it say on my sheet? Uh, if you wrote it in there, it does. Well, we'll just assume that uh, he's kind of short. He's five foot nine. Oh, okay. He's really close. It's you'd have to you'd have to stand back to back to know for sure. Stand butt to butt. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And it also depends on how big your boots are and stuff. Yeah, I like to wear real tall boots. boots. (laughs) (laughs) Platform boots, elevator shoes. Yeah. No, I meant booties because he had just said butts. Oh, yeah. Hold on to your butts. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, I remember seeing that in VHS. Yeah. Uh, We'll have to, we'll have to get back with you a little while, Ronaldo. Hold the, hold the door for us, please. All right, so you guys get on the uh, get on the transport. 
Oh, before I do, let me just uh, let me just do my magic thing so uh, Ronaldo can open the door and, and come back in and out of the the store temporarily oh. until we come back. Okay. Because otherwise, if he got out of the store, he wouldn't be able to come back in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Bustle and Pancake would have to let him in. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. We got to revoke that when we get back. I would I would try the fish market down by the harbor. I hear it's really good. Uh, I don't plan on l- really leaving. I was gonna probably hang out on the couch or something. All right. Don't go into Ralph's room, even if it stinks. Honestly, I don't know much about this place, and I'm afraid that it's dangerous, and I don't really want to leave. I think you're right. All right, let's you guys are the, the experts. Uh, let's go into the stones. Okay. Time for a break. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.cliveparkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Sheena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations, come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. And we're back. All right, so uh, whoever's got the highest charisma can roll with uh, advantage. Make a charisma saving throw. That's definitely not me. I have plus four charisma. 
Ralph's got a plus, plus seven, wisdom. and I have a plus seven. So I okay. guess we're going. Yeah, one of you. Uh, with advantage, maybe? Yeah, advantage. Okay. So you take the higher uh, number. Mother flip flap. <laughs> I, I lost all of my space. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, because I had to move downstairs, and I right. have literally no space now. Okay, let me see how I can. Maybe this will work. <clears throat> okay, uh, 13 plus 7. Is oh, 20. 20. Yeah, you yeah, made it fine. the first one I got was 14. Yeah, you had to beat a 10. Total. Okay. If you guys get below a 10, you'll end up lost in the Innovo. Ugh. Okay. Uh, but you made it. Yep, so you're in... Uh, you come out in the uh, in the in, there's a giant sort of hangar warehouse in London, and you've been here once before. Uh, and there's there are people there waiting to receive you. You see a really big guy with a minigun in one arm, and he's got kind of a stone a stone apparatus covering up his other arm. And uh, he says he says, "Come on, let's go." Squad seventy seven and he leads you uh he leads you into a, a room. It's kinda of, it looks kind of like a almost like a courtroom. He says, uh, you, you go here and you there's a a kind of a podium for with places for all uh all six I, I guess it would be six of you to sit. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. He says, yeah, wait, 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 is the bird coming? Where's the bird? Uh, we don't know where the bird is. Um, he stepped off. Now. Uh, he's flying around, eating worms somewhere. Okay, well, I guess this will come out eventually in the hearing. All right. All right, so you, you all take, kind of take your place, and you see people... Uh, filing in in the there's a podium up above you or like up ahead of you facing you uh one on the left and another one on the right and they're all filing into the one on the left and the one on the right is empty and so you see the guy that led you in he's sitting at one of them he's a, a big guy uh you see a, a a thinner uh woman um with black hair um middle-aged uh, she she sits beside him, uh, and then you see uh, you in you see uh, Riley Masters. You re recognize her from she she was an investigator before. You've met her before. Oh, Tressa. Hold up, this cat's hacking yeah. the hairball. Tressa oh. Young is uh, is also sitting there at the uh, at the podium. Oh, God. I think yeah. to myself, I can't believe Tress is here. She's going to bring up that whole stupid thing about us wanting to use her dead companions as like a, you know, bait. Mm. The woman that you don't recognize with the black hair, she's thin. She says, hello, uh, my name is Billy Church. I'm uh, one of the original members of Jericho uh, in the first oh. squad. Uh... Uh, thanks for coming. And I know it feels like you've been on the move constantly and you've probably felt like checking in with us is a low priority. I know I've been there. Uh, but now we're here and we need to know what's going on. Uh, let's start from the beginning of of this iteration of Squad 77. And I'm sorry, Bentley, but we also want to start with the downfall of the previous Squad 77. Uh, the beginning uh, and and she says, "Okay, so Bentley, when you when you and and Cassius Briar went in there uh, into the the false hell in Tunisia, something happened there. So you, somehow." You so somehow you guys sabotaged the the portal that led to the gulfs that led to the 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 deaths of Squad Nine and Squad Three. 
and uh, I need to know, Bentley, what was your part in that? Bentley uh, kind of clears his throat and looks around a little bit and he says, you know, I'm sorry I didn't know what Cassius was up to that day he told me to wait outside and I waited outside I, I waited for him while he went in there he fought whatever things were in there he messed with the portal he said he shot it down <clears throat> I think we found out that he made it so it only worked one way so the devils could all could come in, but they couldn't get back out again. He he was sabotaging Jericho. So I take responsibility for not knowing what Cassius was up to and for trusting him. She says, okay, uh, well, let's move on. Squad 77, you first recruited Musette Aya uh, from Squad 3 of the Fugue. Musette, what was it that made you want to leave the Fugue to join 77 and the second uh, in the Second Dominion? Uh, I had never been. So I was just ready to, I saw it as an opportunity to travel. All right, then. Uh, and then you brought in uh, Chertovir. Tell us about that. And I understand at that moment, Drovo was missing, went missing, but you also ended up having to rescue Squad 32 from the Aboriginal children. After, after, uh, hiring Musette, you brought in Chertovir. Uh And I, I thought you were originally recruiting Drovo. So what happened there? So what happened was <clears throat> I found uh, well, I couldn't find my brother. My brother was kidnapped by Cassius Breyer, as it turns out. Uh, um, and, and so I ended up seeing him get kidnapped in front of me when he was telling me about Jericho's squad, he got kidnapped by a Nullianac and, and some cultists. And so I ended up almost unwittingly joining up with uh, Squad uh, 77 and assist them to locate and retrieve my brother and defeat the person who had kidnapped him, which at the time we didn't know it was Cassius Breyer. We found that out later. Um, but turns out he was behind that the children of the aboriginal cult he was apparently trying to establish a presence uh in in the first I mean, he was trying to take over the council um he was trying to become the representative for the first dominion and we found out later that he was responsible for atrocities and uh atrocities and shenanigans with squad 78 uh he had killed one of my race oskalok and he i had think we're getting really him. far ahead of the ahead of where we are okay. right now so okay, okay. so a after after you um after you joined squad 77 right the uh, first person you, i met i think was you Musette. had to you were tried to recruit help to rescue Drovo from uh from uh Cassius Breyer. So you went to Squad 32 to recruit their help, but it turns out that they were under siege by a militant group right. calling themselves the Aboriginal Children. So Yeah, there was some squad members who were trapped in a house while other agents were trying to shoot at them, right? I remember So that. so one thing that we need to figure out is how how this cult that supposedly originated with the Second Dominion found its way into Canada. That is a good question. I'm not sure what they were doing there. Well, um, you're uh, you're our squad uh, on the scene in Isordrex. Where we need you to find these things out for us. I mean, what have you learned? 
Well, I've learned that there was this plan that uh, Briar had, Cassius, where he was trying to take over and possibly overthrow the council uh, um, and, and rule from the First Dominion. Uh, bring back the children of the Aboriginal, bring Wait, back the Nullianax. Take over had, the council and rule? How do you? What evidence do you have that he was going to do that? Well, he tried to murder some members of the council during the voting process after we exposed them mm. uh, uh right for right, for having yeah. tried to kill my brother i see yeah no that's true he well he did try to kill them but i guess rule from the first dominion where where do you get that from well i mean he obviously <laughs> wanted to take over the power mm -hmm. that the council had so i believe that he was trying to bring back uh to, to unite the hands of the unbeheld with the wings of Apexamendios and the heart of the Aboriginal and maybe tap into whatever was left of Apexamendios powers or echoes or whatever you want to call it. We'll, we'll come back Our to possible, that. Yeah. So Squad 32 is still inoperative at this moment and there's no presence at the Midian site at all uh, from Jericho. Uh, Ralph and Zoe, you decided to stay on with Squad 77 who rescued you. Um, at this point, at that point, you also had picked up Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Uh, so where is Jonathan right now? <clears throat> That's a good question. Well, we don't yeah. know. We don't know. He left. He just he was never actually officially a member he was just he was. kind of there he, he well, was officially I mean, a member not i mean he didn't like join up the rest the way the rest of us did he just you know was there and now he's not bentley filled out his paperwork for him i don't think that any of us were aware that uh his paperwork had been filled out but the last time we saw him was at the circus where I was also captured. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. That's, that was, um, that's, that's a whole other thing we're going to have to get to, but, um, so you fought these Aboriginal children in, at the Midian site. These they and they, these were just humans, right? It, you fought them, and then you all got came back to Isordorex, where you, uh, having re recently reformed Squad Seventy Seven, you rescued Drovo Dovir, uh, who had been kidnapped Correct. by who? Who kidnapped him? Cassius Breyer. Was Cassius had kidnapped him. Was was well, he there? You have to you have to see it this way. Um the children of the Aboriginal were there. And so the children of the Aboriginal were being controlled by Cassius Breyer from what we uh understood and what was proven by how many times the children of the Aboriginal showed up and how many times Times they were doing Cassius Breyer's bidding, and also he he had access to Voiders and Nullianax. So it seems uh, like every... it stands to reason that it, he was probably behind the, the kidnapping. Right, because every time okay. we saw children of the Aboriginal, sometimes they would also be followed by Nullianax and Voiders, and all that good stuff that Cassius was involved with bringing bringing back. Okay. And through the course of that rescue, you accidentally burned down the warehouse, from what I understand. Well, yes, I mean, you have to understand, they had Nullianax over there, and my brother was, life was in danger, so we fought, we did extreme measures uh, fighting, and somehow during the fight, the warehouse did catch on fire. Can, uh, can you, I'm sorry, can you describe what a Nullianax is to me? I, I not i mean i've dealt with a lot of things but i don't know what that is so the nullianax were basically the shock troops of the unbeheld they were mythical powerful creatures um 
with their heads look like praying hands and inside inside those heads you see sparks of fire which was supposed to be the power of the end of hell and they could just one million act could probably level you know back in the day when they were in their prime with under under hepexamendius's rule they could just come over uh appear at a village and destroy it within hours just one of them they would just fire those rays and pulverize everything and uh, sometimes they would also carry weapons, you know, and uh, they were basically really, really dangerous, really powerful creatures that used to do Hepexamendios' bidding. And so their reappearance uh, signifies the possible revival of Hepexamendios? It certainly seems like at least Cassius was tapping into some sort of... Uh, source of power that allowed him to do that um and he was also trying to like i said bring back some sort of union of three elements that could technically give him access to epic Semendio's powers or even bring back uh, a, another aspect of epic Semendio's. That's, that's what we ascertained i was told this by a giant sphinx by the way which is a complicated situation Wow. Uh, well, um, on your next mission, it was a tough one, right? At the Tunisian Hell site, uh, we lost where we lost Squad Nine and Squad Three. And by the way, we appreciate the fact that you succeeded in there, where two other squads had fallen. Uh, you fought your way through this against the de demons of the Gulfs. Uh, there are reports, and she looks at Tressa that one of you tried to offer up the souls of the dead squad nine in trade for your own is that correct um we were trying to use deception against demons from the gulfs i regret uh trying to use that kind of deception in front of tessa at the time we were we had to fight our way down to that uh, infernal building and we had to go through a lot of levels a lot of like terrible levels with roiling ovens of excrement and lakes of rotten corpses and I, I wasn't thinking straight at the time so I did end up offering my own soul instead and made a deal with the gulfs that I was confident that we could accomplish so yes I, I i went back on that proposal and i did offer myself as collateral to be able to leave that place in safety <clears throat> and, and the rest of the squad that was with me thank you and and i think that i think that ridley had also uh confirmed that in her investigation and so we're considering I think that, that should confirm that too yeah, and, and I think that we're considering that matter settled. I just wanted to to kind of lay that out there in case there were any more suspicions about it. I think that we're all good with that now, right? And she looks at Tressa, okay. and Tressa nods. Okay. Thank you, Tressa. Uh, so, in, but in that, there is something else. In that encounter, uh, you, your squad first met this... Um, this person, uh, the the sorcerer, what, um, T um, Terrence, is his name? I think he. Uh, yes. He kidnapped y your bird, Jonathan Livingston yes. Seagull. He took him, uh, and he has some kind of history with Ralph. Is that correct? Uh, you know, I look at the other people and say, yes, I think he was involved with that circus that we had to rescue Ralph out of. So tell tell me about, uh, tell me about. I rescued my parents. Okay. I left the circus on my own. Um, I'm sorry. Is this Ralph? Yeah. Terrence. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Terrence 
Do I need to be specifying as Ralph? I assumed that it would just be okay. Uh, obviously, yeah. I'm not yeah. Musette talking for. Yeah. No, I just, Ralph. I just, I always want to make sure that <laughs> I, I, that as I know. Ralph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I escaped the circus, and uh, but I was, I was. I don't know if I was born there because I can't remember that far back, but I was there from the time I was, I was raised there. Um, and Terrence is, uh, uh, Terrence is pretty much only concerned with Terrence and will do anything to further his own, his own ends. And um, what are his ends? I, I don't trust him. I don't. The, this is the thing we don't understand. He, we know he infiltrated don't Squad know what they Seventy-Eight. Are the uh, we don't know who he is, or what he is, or what his goals are. I, I mean, I, I honestly just... don't know either. But you've spent the most time with him out of everyone. I think he just wants to um, use his circus, right? The Infernal Parade to just uh, entertain, make money. Okay. Well, as, as far as I... The answer is no. He's a shapeshifter. What do you mean, shapeshifter? Sorry. Hi, I'm, I'm Richard Smitty. I'm kind of new to the group, but uh, whenever we were at the circus and we were fighting him when I looked through my glasses I could see that he was more of like a half tiger half man versus what everybody else can see which was just his humanoid appearance so I think he's got something going on other than what meets the eye he was pretty uh, elusive as far as whenever we would try to confront him he was able to get away but then we half, killed him Didn't we half kill him? tiger half man half feline of some sort yeah, he, he looked like a guy with, like, glowing eyes uh, to me. But then when Richard saw him through the pair of glasses, I think he saw what they described to you. So did, that was weird. Did, his, did he look like his hands were backwards? Like he had the left hand on the right and the right hand on the left? Do you know, I didn't notice that. It 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 got pretty heated at the Infernal Parade. So it all happened so fast. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. Did any of you guys notice his hands? I didn't notice his hands. I was taken aback by just the fact that he didn't look the same. Right. Well, you're asking us that like you have an idea of who he might be. Well, uh, there's a creature from the Gulfs, uh, and it's in Eastern mythology called a Rakshasa. It's a, basically a devil. And uh, the legend says that they're mostly invulnerable, but they can only be killed by a crossbow that's been blessed by... Uh, that's been blessed by a, a holy person or fired by a good person. Something like that. You know, the, mm. the legends are a little vague. But... Uh, you managed to kill it somehow. Rakshasa? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that shows that either we're good people, <laughs> which kind of goes for us and what we well, did. Which, or which one of you, Rakshasa. which one of you killed it? Wasn't it Musette? I can't remember. I think it was Musette. I don't think it was me. As Musette, I don't remember. Uh, it was a lot of people that day. It wasn't anybody from Squad 77. It was uh, Renfrew with his bow. It sounds like he was from a creature from the Gulfs. What business would it have to infiltrate Squad 78? Well, he had some sort of personal vendetta. I, I don't think it Ralph. was actually. 
Yeah, I think he was trying to get to Ralph. Hmm. I don't even know if he knew that Oskolosk was actually Cassius Breyer, or if it was just a coincidence that he infiltrated the squad. Oh. Because as soon as he got access to to uh, Ralph, he disappeared. He wasn't even involved with any anything else, right? I think it was so just looking it had, for a new thing to so, add to the circus. So it had nothing to... You th you believe that it had nothing to do with this other plot of reviving Apexamendios and the other infiltrators of that poor squad 78 that has been uh, very unfortunate. That's what I think. Well, well, I'll tell you what. I mean, if it is a creature from the Gulfs, I could try to find out if other creatures from the Gulfs know about him. How do you mean? Well, during our adventures, especially at the end of, you know, that infernal location in Africa, I, like I said, I made a deal with some creatures from the Gulfs, Magira and um, a one-armed demon, uh, her mate. I made a deal with him to, so we could escape that location that we would... give him the soul of Cassius Breyer because there was a bar there was a price to be paid soul for souls and we wanted to get the creatures from the gulfs back into the gulfs and the only way to seal that um would have been to use some souls and we ended up having to use the souls of Leo Party and the other guy who had created that building Gaustus was um, his name Gaustus thank you yeah um I'm going by my memory as shaky as it is. Uh, Me too. I have a hard time remembering names. <laughs> so, yes, I, I, I don't know that he was involved with that, because like I said, I mean, I think um, I think that, that once Raksasha um, got what he wanted, which was Ralph, he disappeared. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly how much he was involved with uh, with Cassius for that plan. And I guess now we can't find out anymore because, you know, he's dead. But I could try contacting those demons that I communicated with in the gulfs that were in that inferno and see if they can give me any insight on what Rosh Kasha uh, would be doing. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, you know, one major disappointment of this group is that you seem to go around murdering everybody and not investigating anything. Well, keep in mind they try to kill us first. I mean, you know what what this Rock Sasha did? He, he sent Ralph to fight in an arena uh, as a spectacle against a giant minotaur with an axe. And he wasn't going, he was playing for keeps. He wasn't going to be like, he wasn't going to be like leaning on Ralph. This, this sort of thing comes with the territory. Well, it's so part of the job your enemies. and investigating is also part of your job. Well, they're, okay. they're zealots. I mean, look at the the presence of no population at Darthur City once we got there. You know, there these people, regardless of what they're planning to do, the fact that they're willing to be uncompromised and go to any length to, to obtain these goals, we we put a big wrench in their plans to succeed. Uh, like I said, regardless of whether or not they actually can bring Hapex Mindios back or tap into the first and use its power, the zealot nature that they have is just... It's not something that we can abide by. It's just too disruptive and too dangerous. So, Richard Smitty, you were uh, contracted to assist Squad 77 in uh, locating Cassius Breyer and returning him for questioning. Since that time, you've never contacted us and you have not brought Cassius Breyer to us. Where is he? Well, so the reports that we found that uh, that Cassius Breyer had escaped hell are actually were true. I was able to that, um, yeah. assist assist, uh, assist Squad Seventy Seven uh, with locating him and putting him to an end. That's just been a big spiraling adventure. It's been hard to to tie, take any time out to try and contact you back. So you you, that... you 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 killed him, but you didn't question him. 
did you at least retrieve his body and bring that back? We we definitely questioned him. Um, whenever we were confronting him to begin with, he was, like I said, he was not compromising. He wasn't having uh, any sort of conversation with us. It just instantly turned to battle as soon as we confronted him. Um, and we're here now to debrief, so... This so is where is his body? Okay, so you want to know where Cassius Briar's body is? He's yeah. at Durther City, where we left him. In Why the did dirt. you leave him there? Uh, Richard, your whole job was to bring him back to us. Hopefully alive, but if not, we at least needed him. I mean, we can still bring him. It's not like we can't bring him. It just don't happen yeah, here because I didn't know that's what this was about. We totally have him. That was your. That was the reason you were contracted to assist Squad Seventy Seven, and then oh, you got wrapped up assisting. into this other stuff. I'm still assisting. It's just not over yet. Cassius Briars, over. So yeah, but what do you the want effects of what he was doing aren't over yet. Do you want us to go get Cassius Briar? We can go back to Durther City and get you Cassius Briar. You know, ever since I left my peaceful life of being a librarian, I have encountered countless creatures who have been trying to kill me and my brother and my new colleagues at every step of the way. And it's, it feels like I'm being put on trial here for surviving and doing the job that Jericho Squad is supposed to do, which is to protect all the dominions from supernatural threats. Part of that job is coming back with information. We are coming back with information. I mean, what information- It's hard to learn anything from... when you just kill everybody all the time. Okay, granted. I'm I sorry, but I actually have to, to side with, with, with Richard on this because I mean, he's put it the most plainly, which is, it's really difficult to try to extract information if these people immediately are trying to kill us. Right. It was a it was a situation where it was clear that we weren't able to talk to Cassius anymore. Um, well, here's what it comes down to, I think, is that normally if we were just going to investigate this situation, we could have done so, but we feel like somebody tipped off uh, had some sort of inside information about us and they had a, a scheme running against us so they were actually actively knowing where our position was as far as trying to investigate them so it wasn't our normal circumstance to just hey you know find and gather information about the situation because as soon as we like you know i've mentioned before as soon as as soon as they showed up they already had ulterior motives and it wasn't the it wasn't what we were expecting when we went in we had to think on the fly and sensitive. adapt yeah, it was a time sensitive situation. If we had not acted the way we did, they would have been able to bring together the hand, the heart, and the wings of the underheld and Apex Mendios. And who knows where we'd be right now? Where we did the right thing. And um, what was your next question? You did the right thing. What? Which one was the right thing? Defeating Hello. Cassius? Defeating Cassius and thwarting his plans to incite religious fanaticism and use that to cause harm to the realm. That's not happening right now All right. because well, we thwarted it. Uh, we're going to call in the rest of the uh, the rest of the reconciled council uh to sit on the rest of this the, on this next part because this next part is not uh confidential to them so they they will come in so uh and then at this point uh you see drovo coming in on the the, the podium that's on the right side uh and huzzah odell uh, and akrit friedley representing the third dominion coaxial tasco of the fourth dominion and uh ridley is already there because she's works for Jericho and she represents the fifth dominion on the council. Mm -hmm. Isn't Chur's brother supposed to be there too? Yeah. He was the first one I said. Oh, 
Uh, so a clerk says the proceeding recognizes Squad 77. The proceeding also recognizes Frank Delgado, Billy Church, and Tressa Young of Jericho. The proceeding recognizes Potashkwa's mayor, semblance, warning, and constable rotary signature. Everyone stand and raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before any and all deities you hold dear and, to, and whom hold only the best interest and intentions toward all our peoples? Aye. And the, the yes. council members all, I do. Uh, Billy Church says, I understand uh, Constable Signature wants to give us some background before we begin. Uh, but first, we want to update the council on uh, Darther City because they've been anxiously waiting to hear the results of that. And, and I understand that they have not been updated yet. So please go ahead and give your report on what you found when you went to Darther City. It was a ghost town when we first showed up. There was nobody there. Um, like I said, you know, it seemed completely deserted until we started looking around a little bit. Some of us found some signs that could be from a struggle. But yeah, the entire population was suddenly gone before, before what took place after. I, I confer with what he said. We got there, we saw signs of struggle, empty houses, uh, you know, signs that someone had been killed here and there, um, weird stains, and then, you know, we got attacked by, you know, Cassius and uh, some of the other members of Squad 78 before they realized what was going on. And then we had to fight other creatures and a giant Nullianak. So that's what happened. It, it seems like they might have sacrificed, and this is just my interpretation, they might have sacrificed some of the people from that Durther city uh, in preparation for some sort of ritual. At least that's my understanding of it. And uh, Huzzah Odell says, did you find any of the bodies? No. We did not. She looks over at Drovo, and uh, this is terrible news. But we feared it was something like this. We've not heard anything from them for days. No traffic has come in and out. Uh, there's been rumors of some creature, flying creature, that uh, kills anyone on the road. Oh, yeah. We met it. We destroyed it. And I'm sorry, I mean, did you also want to question that creature? Being what a are you snarky. talking about? We did destroy the flying creature. It almost destroyed us. We were going to Durther City, and then on the way, we found this weird kind of dragon creature, and uh, it tore off chunks of our van and tried to kill us. So as uh, Odell says, why would I want to question the creature? What are you talking about? I mean, you guys are complaining that we kill everything. Who are you guys? What are you talking about? Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I was referring to Riley. She she just no, Billy, walked Billy, in the Billy, room. Billy, Billy. Billy. I yeah, was talking about Huzzah Billy. just walked in the room. She has no idea what you're talking. She wasn't part of that. Right. Sorry. I was just I was just looking at Billy when I said that. I glance over at Chur. I'm like, raise my eyebrows. I'm like, <laughs> chill. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll chill. So yeah, we killed the gelatinous worm lizard flying creature that destroyed our truck. Um, without, you know, without any mercy, we just killed it because we're really good at killing stuff. Squad 77. That's us. The killers is what other people call us. They're like, yo, they're Squad 77, a.k.a. the killers. They, they kind of look back and forth and look at the at the um, 
the mayor and the constable and they fidget a little bit. Okay. As uh, Ralph, he has no opinion. As you said, uh, yeah. I have a I personally do not um feel that way. I think that everything that we've done has been for uh self protection. Yeah. Yeah, but so we did investigate after we did kill the dragon, we cut open into it and found like something inside there, didn't we? Like a sentient life source that was driving that thing, maybe? Can't remember. Make an intelligence check, whoever wants to remember. Okay, I'll make an intelligence check. No, this is a save. Okay, hang, hang on. This was a save, uh, intelligence save. Sorry, let me do an intelligence check. Where is intelligence? Uh, strength, dexterity. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's go ahead and do an intelligence check. I've got 21. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah, you remember it inside of it it seemed to be uh, like a massive cocoon around a smaller um, righteous creature oh um like the the brain was a, a righteous didn't we ask it three it, questions with a spell or truth or something like that yeah that was that was the nolian act right he didn't allow us to do it because he just didn't answer our questions oh yeah Right, right. It, it answered your uh, questions. It just didn't give. It just didn't give, you know, a lot of importance to, to lying. So it was actually just telling us the stuff. Um, so yeah, I, it turns out inside that uh, dragon creature, we found a, a cocoon around the small righteous brain. So it looks like that thing had been modified by magic from a right, righteous to turn into that weird dr dragon thing that was flying around. So that's how Cassius must have created that thing. Cassius. Cassius and those, those righteous, created that? Well, the righteous seem to be the souls of the Darthers. Or something. So we oh. know that they were being pretty, pretty nasty with their magic as far as, you know turning people into their mindless zombie beings to fight for them. So then we proceeded to Darthur City. Right. Yeah, we almost, uh, I think the two people who went to Darthur City originally mm -hmm. we were going to separate and do some stuff with uh, Squad 78, but then we decided to go against that and uh and we had to all go and see if we could locate that creature and kill it on the way to Durther City. So that threat is no longer affecting the roads to Durther City. Well, at least that's something. Mm-hmm. Um, so she looks back at the clerk and the clerk says, okay, um, I understand. Uh, so, Constable Signature wants to give us some background before we begin. Uh, Constable, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> and so you see this kind of bedraggled old guy. Uh, he's got a scar across his face. He's missing one hand. He says, "Thank you." And I want you to know that out of this, out of respect for you and for Jericho organization, out of the the need to avoid all interdimensional incidents. We did not make any arrests five days ago. Uh, we're here to respect your customs, and in in a while you'll hear how it's imperative that you respect ours. That's for the mayor to tell. I'm... Oh, sorry. Um, I messed up. So the... This is the... This is the constable. The, I was doing the mayor. So the constable is a kind of bedraggled looking woman. Sorry. She's the one talking. And she says, okay, so while you're here, while uh, you respect ours, I'm here to tell you about the circus. They went out by, uh, they went by the name of Terence's Infernal Parade, and they pitched their tents on the outskirts of Patashqua about a week before your squads showed up. 
Uh, they had freak shows and your typical circus acts. But in the last few days, they also had bloody fights to the death. And sometimes it was animals fighting each other or other people against animals or monsters. And we saw that at one point, uh, she points at Ralph, uh, completely destroyed a creature that looked like a half man and half doiky sort of a creature. Uh, and there was a magic bird who was forced to fight an oviate. And uh, over the course of our investigation, we learned that many of the combatants were captured and forced to battle to the death. And I have no doubt that this is why your squad got involved and we were ready to make arrests, ready to break up the whole thing and rescue the captured combatants when your Jerichos came in and murdered them all in cold blood. At one point, the combatants even surrendered. Uh, they put their hands up. And that one, he points, she points at Richard, uh, attacked the one that surrendered. One called Mary Slaughter, I believe. Uh, this was cowardly, an unprofessional act, and it set off a chain of events that led to the murder of all the rest of the circus performers. And I'll let the mayor tell you the rest. And so the mayor, and this is the guy I was describing before who has the scar and the missing hand and stuff. He says, some of you may know about Patashqua and some of you may not. So I'm going to put it all on the record to you uh, today. We have crime, rarely, but it happens. And for any crime that's committed in Patashqua, we only have one punishment. Uh, you get sacrificed to our sea god. Um, we say Richard Smitty is guilty. Not only did he murder an unarmed member of the circus, but he was seen strutting back to his vehicle afterwards. While they dragged the mutilated corpse of one of the other circus performers down the street with them. He was proud of being a murderer, and we just heard him say it out loud that they're murderers and they're proud. I said killer, not murderer, and that is absolutely and allegorically false. The, the clerk uh, steps in and says, please do not interrupt. Uh, you'll have your turn. Is this what Jericho stands for? Stopping us from getting our own justice means that the sea god Emmett was denied. We ask the members of Jericho and the Reconciled Council to turn over Richard Smitty so that we don't have to turn over innocent Patashquan citizens in his place. I'll yield the rest of my time. And then Billy Church comes in and says, OK, thank you, Constable Signature. Um, uh, wow. Yeah, so, you know, now I, I um, one question that I have From what, okay, so uh, a little background here. One thing that that you all need to know: in all of the dominions, everywhere across the five dominions, Jericho is a secret, except the fourth dominion. The fourth dominion is the only one that knows about us, and that's because we maintain a gate right there by Patashqua. So they know who we are. You guys showed up. Squad 77 and squ a member of Squad 78 showed up and murdered the people in a circus. And I know there are extenuating circumstances, and I know one of your members was kidnapped. Uh, but this puts us in a very, very tough spot. And on top of that, there are there's one aspect rescuing your friend in one aspect doing your job and there's something else when you're killing out of just for fun or you're you're dragging the corpse of these creatures down the street uh stuffing them into your vehicle from she looks at her notes to so drag them back for what purpose you know and and again we were supposed to investigate. I mean, you're supposed to look for any ties that these circus had to the 
to what you guys were looking into the the uh resurrection of hepexamendios and we we don't see that we just see murder no. and by all accounts from what i have heard musette called for an end to the fighting and everyone surrendered and then at that point Richard Smitty attacked them and started it up again. May I so, address the... Ne hold on. So now if there are any no further questions, we'll turn over the proceedings to Jericho Squad 77 and specifically Richard Smitty, you can go first and then you have 10 minutes on the clock. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but that's not actually how it went down. Um, but uh, people did lose their lives. And uh, there's a lot of deception going on. As you can see, using my true sight glasses, I was able to see that not everything was exactly as it was uh, portrayed to be. So just because they had said that they were surrendering, I had saw some sort of uh, some motion. Um, use some sort of insight to basically realize that this wasn't actually done and it wasn't over. So uh, I took the initiative and was able to uh, to save the day. Now, make a we deception were... check. Deception check? Yeah. Deception, deception. Okay. Boom. I roll... <laughs> yeah, I rolled a 12. Oh, okay. They, uh, they don't look convinced. Go ahead. Now, I understand that you might not feel like um, I'm telling you the truth, but the, here's what it comes down to. We pulled the bodies back so that we could use some investigation. And if it looked like I was happy or elated, it's because I just got out of a battle and I didn't die. So, yeah, I was a little bit happy um, for that moment there, but it wasn't reveling in the fact that there were innocent lives lost. Collateral damage is going to happen, but, you know, we did what we could. Well, um, make another deception check about why you pulled the bodies back. Why did we pull the bodies back? Was it because... Ralph that wanted to eat them? Yeah, yeah. but I ain't gonna tell him that. Yeah, but so but you just said it was for an investigation, so you lied to them again, so you Boom. have to make another deception check. Sixteen. Yeah. Ralph was gonna investigate their insides. Yeah. <laughs> they uh they also they're this also looking cold, man. They 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 put their hands in their heads cuz they can tell you're lying. Like or this? their heads in their hands. Yeah. Oh, wow. They're like and we were investigating how many stakes could be made. <laughs> yeah. Um you you still have a good 5 minutes left in, in if any anyone else on the squad wants to speak i'd like to ask something to the mayor this this is your time to 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 speak uh you're making statements you're not asking questions okay okay that's fair all right um so from what you said this circus was in the city of Petashoka. And you guys were aware that there have been bloody combats to the death happening in that circus. Um, you guys hadn't done anything by the time we got there. Uh, creatures were dying. Creatures were being pit against each other uh, to the death. So we saw our Jericho brother, Ralph, being put in a position of fighting for his life in front of a crowd that was paying to see blood. I agree yeah. that we didn't have a lot of sympathy, sympathy for the Infernal Parade when we were there because we just went there to find Ralph because we found out that he had been captured. And so as such, we decided it was our duty to investigate what had happened and retrieve Ralph by any means necessary. And that's what we did. Um, 
And if I can, if I can interrupt, exactly, that's exactly what we did. We broke up so that we could look from all angles. That was our investigation to see exactly what was going on because we didn't know for sure. We know what people had said on the outside might be part of the show, but we didn't know any of that for sure. And we did not go in there guns a blazing. Uh, we waited to see whether or not those rumors were true before any of us did anything. So if anything, those people attacked our people first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, if I can add to that, uh, we were sitting in the, we were sitting, we took our seats, and uh, all of a sudden, the spotlight starts turning to us, and the guy from the circus starts saying that we're here to to do harm and stuff. So that's when it all went down under false pretenses, and we had to defend ourselves and rescue Ralph. As Ralph, um, I had been kidnapped. And uh, I, I feel like at some point I had probably said that uh, the circus, my time at the circus, was not a good time. Uh, so I think that, I mean, from my point of view, because I was actually down in the arena, uh, Zoe was absolutely correct. Everyone fanned out. No one... I, everyone was acting as if they were part of the audience. I don't think that it was anyone's intent to uh, cause harm to any uh, civilians. Yeah, you have about 30 seconds left if anybody else wants to say anything else or you can yield the rest of your time. Trying to sacrifice me isn't going to bring back the people that you lost. So I understand if you want to take out your frustrations. But it's just, you know, it's just not going to do anything except for cause more death. And I think that's what we're trying to get away from, you know, as a community. And Mary Slaughter was not exactly merciful either. Um, I don't remember seeing her raise her hands, but if if she got shot, then she got shot in combat. And she was uh, one of the first to attack us, so... It was an opportunity attack, in my opinion. The opportunity mm. it presented itself, I took it, and it resulted in us being able to tell this tale today. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we had skipped over the part of asking questions of the, the constable and the mayor, so if you want to take some time to ask questions of them, uh, Churduvir, I heard you saying that you wanted to ask a question to the constable so if you want to do that you can no i'm just curious to know if you guys were aware that there were combats to the death uh happening at that circus why didn't you guys um shut it down before we stopped by it seems like they were having a lot of people a lot of audience and they were in fact doing battles to the death so where were the authorities we don't have a Jericho squad like you. We have three people. And oh, so, oh, so, so what you're saying is that uh, you yourself said that you had known about this for days. You're saying that if you had a Jericho squad, you'd send them in? Hello? Here we are. W was that a question? Yes. Are you saying that if you had your own Jericho squad, you would send them in to stop this? I'm saying I mean, that with the manpower that we had, we had to act very carefully and we had a plan and we were about to put it in motion, but you guys stepped in and did it for us. And what was that plan? Sit around and watch? No, we were going to make arrests. How Good luck with that. We went in there and didn't even do anything. We were singled out hmm. without doing anything and they, they told them to attack us. So if you don't have a Jericho squad, what are you going to do? Go in there and say, oh, well, we have some nice questions to ask you. That doesn't work when they're attacking you. The, mm -hmm. the, quest, the, mm -hmm. the clerk says, excuse me, can you please uh, keep these two questions and refrain from being argumentative? I'm from New Orleans. That's impossible. <laughs> Look, we're doing the best that we can. And uh, there was an implied question from Richard earlier that I want to address. We're not 
we don't sacrifice people to get revenge. We do it because we have to. We have an agreement with this creature and all of our criminals have to go there and those criminals were going to be the people we arrested at the circus but now those people are dead and so now we have to provide somebody or if and if we don't it's going to be in, well, our own innocent citizens well they're but, not criminals if they haven't been charged yet exactly and if you want to bad that badly i can resurrect i don't even know where to begin with that um, I mean, just the implication of having done criminal activities is enough to require appeasement of your god. I would say that they would have to be put on trial first, and there's a possibility that they could have won. However, their actions prevented him from ever having that happen because they uh, caused us to judge them right there on the spot. You don't get to tell us how our criminal justice system works, Mr. Smitty. I'm telling you how you know, human nature works. We're on the fifth dominion, right? We you are guys... right at this moment, but that's not where, that's not where I uh, am a human. You are a he human has rights. on our dominion. You're being extradited. I don't think you should go down that way. Realistically, so, I think you guys are over. If I were in your place, I wouldn't want to either. Criminals. Well, we don't know how you're justice system works but you guys do have self-defense as a defense right I was in the audience that day I saw what he did and that was not self-defense that's anecdotal are you a witness or are you actually trying me yeah you can't be both a witness and the judge Again, we've got people from the Fifth Dominion telling us how she, he looks at the rest of the group, telling us how our criminal justice system works. Do you guys? Well, this is Jericho Squad. It's not the fourth or the second. It's it's the Jericho. So it's a little bit different than just how maybe your colloquial representation works down there. But I have like federal, basically Jericho. Uh, rights that also have to be awarded. You know that I'm going into these foreign lands with the possibility of having to do dirty business, so I think I have some sort of immunity to some of those local antiquated laws. Their eyes get... The, the rest of the of Jericho's eyes get really big when you say that. Yeah, I, I have a question, though. So you're saying you're in the audience. So you saw with your own eyes what happened and how we were singled out and attacked. Um, isn't it possible that you might have misunderstood what Mary Slaughter was doing? And and if I understood correctly, you're saying some of those people at the circus were criminals you guys sent to the circus? For what purpose? Wait, what? Didn't, what? didn't, didn't he say that they would send criminals to the circus? No. What, do, what is that? What are you talking about? Okay, so what what did he mean about criminals in the circus? Because I, I thought you said something like that you they had sent people to the circus undercover or something to see what was going on? They have three people in law enforcement that were in they the audience. Three, they had three people. So you guys had three people from law enforcement in the in in, in the audience. Not criminals. And okay. So you had three people in a circus full of deadly creatures and obvious gladiatorial combat, you know, participants. And so my question to you is, what were what was your plan? What were you guys going to do to shut that place down? How would you propose to make arrests to a group that has a giant nine foot minotaur with an axe first of all that minotaur is dead yeah you're so, welcome are you taking credit for that well you weren't even Ralph, there as ralph, ralph that was me ralph that was is, me. he was delicious yeah he yeah. was delicious i stand by my that was ralph a jericho squad member so you're trying to say that you had a warrant for for Mary what's a warrant warranting the arrest 
What are the? He, he looks at. He looks arrest. at the rest. He, he looks at the rest of. Warren's the, a of, word though too. Like warrant as in a verb versus a noun. Uh, I actually have another question. I warrant that I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, okay. who who are you mad? Why do? Why would you need to sacrifice Richard? What was the warrant for? Are you talking Mary, about yourself in the of, third person? Yeah, so basically I am at this point. So I'm asking, why would they want to put um, a warrant out for Richard again? Because there was people there that died. Did you guys have a warrant for the person I killed or just for the people that potentially could have been a part of the situation? Because wasn't that Mary lady? Was she part of the the issue there? Was that somebody you guys had an interest in taking down for your god? Was, was there the a gods? bounty for Mary Slaughter? I understand bounty. I don't understand warrant. Warrant, Let me like, try to answer your questions. What? Does it warrant this sort of action? What sort of action? Arresting her. Arresting Mary Slaughter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary Slaughter was a was a captured combatant just like your your uh, person Ralph that you rescued. So the, the only difference is you rescued you rescued one and you murdered the other. And you guys weren't there to arrest her, so you don't have to worry about appeasing your gods because your gods don't require her. That's what you were saying. The, the clerk speaks up, said, please keep these to questions only, not statements. Question mark. <laughs> As you said. Um, okay, so can Zoe, because she did already offer and she did point out that can she resurrect Mary Slaughter and can we give that give her to you as a um, replacement for Richard. Absolutely not. Mary Slaughter was an, a victim. My question is, you okay. said you you said you were one of three people sent there to observe. Who are the other two? The constable sitting next to me. Wait, what do you mean sent? I'm the mayor. You said you sent three people there to yeah. observe what was going on, I and was that you there. were one of them. I was there. The constable was there, and we have a deputy. Who is the deputy? You guys didn't help us then. The who is the deputy, not, and why are the, we not, who, not? Two questions. One, who is the deputy? And two, why are we not talking to these people individually so that we know that they, you don't get your stories all straight together? Two of we the three of us were, are here right now, and the deputy's not here because the deputy doesn't... doesn't uh, doesn't have high enough clearance to come through Jericho. And that's on you guys. We need to talk to the deputy because two people, two witnesses at, at the same time can get their stories st straight. But if you I talk to people individually, they can't do that. Well, what I'm saying And is... we can see if there's any inconsistencies because I don't believe for a second that people were just sent there just to observe unless they were actually just part of the audience. Is that a question? Yes. May we please question the deputy? Why are you asking me that? I I wanted him to come and they said no. That's you guys. They, That's Jericho said no. We didn't say no. So let You're me, Jericho, let me right? Question, Jericho said no. I. This is the first I've heard of it, so obviously I did not. And uh, Billy Church says, "Yeah, we that the deputy didn't didn't warrant uh, clearance." So, can I ask a question then? Since this is about Richard or me, I guess you guys had told us that you have three people that you could send down there to investigate before you shut this place down because it was bad, and you were going to bring those people to justice, and then we somehow prevented you from bringing these people to justice by killing them. However, the person that you guys are singling me out for is Mary Slaughter, and she was actually just a victim because she was in there just like Ralph as a contestant, as a combatant, versus being a part of these people you were trying to bring down. So this that would like nullify your claim. Wouldn't that nullify your claim of saying that I prevented you from getting justice for this god when in fact the person that you're questioning me about murdering wasn't on the on the list for your god? I don't understand the question at all. We weren't the there to is, arrest Mary Slaughter. 
Exactly. So why are you putting me on the on the chopping block for Mary Slaughter? We were there to arrest other people that you murdered. Which but you are... committed a crime. You committed a murder there at the circus. No, I didn't commit a murder. I attacked. That, she ended up it, dying you attacked from a, it, a person who had raised her hands in surrender and backed away. Man, we're using subterfuge, we're using intimidation and persuasion tactics the whole time. Just because you raise your hands doesn't mean it is over. I'm just saying. I agree with that statement. Um, I agree with that statement. If I remember correctly, those knives that she had didn't drop until she was dead. Yep. Good so, I can go like this, but if the knives are still going around in the air that doesn't mean i'm giving up it just means i'm backing away <laughs> while my, try to tell me while my weapons are still circus. attacking i agree i remember she was still attacking you're the one who called aren't you the one who called for the surrender and they all agreed I did at one point, but there was it was so hectic. There were some people that were that weren't stopping. Yeah, it's the heat of some, combat. And and so, if I remember correctly, also some people did run away, and we didn't bother them. It's just the ones that kept attacking. Is that a question? Is that not right? Is what not right? That some people did ran, run away and we left them alone, but the people who kept attacking is who we fought. No, you killed them all. No, no, no. There was one clown that, that ran off. I remember that. Nope. No, you killed all, every single mm. one of them. Mm -mm. You really did. You killed them all. No, there was one that ran. I remember there was one that ran off. I, he was down at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> There were two uh, animal handler people that had managed the cages that had push brooms. Those people you didn't kill. Because they weren't attacking. Yeah. And a guy that, and there was a guy that manned a cannon that never fired at anybody that also Thank didn't God. get killed. Yeah. Okay. So let me understand, see if I understand this correctly. You are saying that we murdered everybody and now you're just saying that we did not murder everybody. That was me, Ryan, telling you what happened because you weren't remembering because you're talking about a clown that ran away. Well, I, I, it was one of those, those low-level people. But still, let me see if I understand this correctly, <laughs> and I'll phrase it in the form of a question. On the one hand, we murdered everyone, according to the to the, the people questioning us. And on the other hand, we did not murder everyone. Is, is, that, is, is that what's going on? We have two different stories here going on at the same time you murdered everyone that was uh that was in attacking. the arena to fight and attacking yes. actively attacking yeah. so and if someone some of is them actively attacking you murdered you, I... all of the ones that surrendered are you are, oh, no no because we were sitting there and then they pointed us out as being enemies and then they started attacking us so it seems to me that right. that would be self-defense at that point. Is that not right? That's and the when their boss, the uh, Terrence was his name, when he died and turned to ash, uh, Musette called for their surrender and they all agreed. And all of the enemy combatants who were there as prisoners raised their hands in surrender. And then Richard decided that was the opportune moment to murder Mary Slaughter. The knives Can did not you? fall. I didn't kill her in one shot. It's not like I murdered her. I attacked Actually, her. you did, you did kill her in one shot. Well, it's not my Can fault I she ask you, handle it. Can I ask you one thing? So you were there to arrest people from the circus. I'm assuming that means you would have arrested the people that were there and anybody who had murdered. We were there to the arrest other... Terrence. Right. But Terrence had people under his command or under his um, that supported him and his business and his venture at the circus, right? He had people who were there who were um, circus people and they knew what was going on. So what would happen to them if they had been arrested and found out they had been accomplice to 
uh, fights to the death and murders, would they have also been sacrificed to your serpent god? Is that an insult? It's not a serpent no. god. Well, There's I'm no sorry. serpent what god. Kind of god is it? It's a sea what god. A sea god, yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I apologize. So a sea god. So my question to you is, so whoever murders someone uh, gets sacrificed to the sea god, correct? No, that's not correct. Whoever okay. commits so a crime in Patashkwa or on its outskirts gets sacrificed. Okay, so so murder is not a crime? Murder is a crime. Okay. So One of many, many crimes. So did you guys, during your uh, stakeout to the circus, did you ever see Mary Slaughter uh, uh, kill people for sport in the arena? She was forced to. Okay, but she did kill her, kill people, right? Could have resisted and just allowed herself to die. We were also actually we, we never also... saw her kill anyone during her time. I during didn't. really while she while she was in Patashkwa. Saw that one pointing at Ralph kill a, a a beast man. And we saw some animals fight each other. Did you not see Mary Slaughter uh, try to kill us? Yes, I saw that. She was okay. she was Our, the, the results of our investigation were that this circus ran itself in quite a different way up until it was taken over by Terrence. Terrence was mm -hmm. the only one we were going to arrest. He was the one forcing all the rest of them uh, to do this these things. He was the one uh, in charge. He was the one we were going to arrest. All the rest of them we considered to be um, kidnapped and forced into servitude. Okay, thank you. The clerk chimes in and says, Okay, now are there any more questions for anyone involved? Thumbs down means no questions? Okay. The clerk says, If there are no more questions, we'll go to the final uh, the, the final speech by the uh, by the mayor. You, mayor, you have five minutes on the clock. Mayor says, I want you to know something, and this is in the strictest confidence, and it doesn't leave this room. I don't like this kind of justice. Mayors in the past liked it because it was a convenient way to get rid of their people they didn't like. I once tried to fight against it, and look what it got me. You know, and he holds up the stump where he used to have a hand. Damn. Others weren't so lucky as me. I've had this conversation many times with criminals, and it always comes to nothing. Uh, Richard Smitty, I'll give you a full pardon if you and your friends can kill the crab god Emmett. You'll be tied to a stake on the beach, but your friends will be free to watch with the rest of the crowd. Now understand something, this always fails. So we can't be seen helping you. In fact, we're, we're going to make it look like we're attacking you if you get free. Uh, just don't fight back, you know, or pretend like you're fighting us or whatever. We'll fall down. Don't hit us. Don't attack us. Don't kill us. If you do any of that stuff, the deal is off. Okay, you know. Deal. Uh, so you understand? Yep. Okay. I'm taking it. All right, then. Thank you very much. We totally probably don't deserve that, but I really appreciate uh, your lenience today. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll well, comply with whatever is required. If you can get rid of this thing, it will be a huge help to our town as well. Wait, now I, now I do have questions. We can go ahead. So am I supposed to kill this thing or no? Yeah. Is this is this giant crab your sea god? Yes. You you well, don't you don't you worship it? Probably not by free will though. No. Okay. We 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 um well it depends I, on I who see what you're doing. it depends on who you ask. Some people in town worship it. 
most of us are just afraid of it. You know, there's <laughs> there's been an, this is a long long standing deal that we have with this thing that I don't agree with, and it's awful. I mean, any crime that you commit, this is the only punishment. Can you imagine? I'm on board with this, but this is a very roundabout way to recruit the Jericho squad to help your village. That's all I'll say. So we'll do that. Supposed to only pretend well, to hurt. I, it's not. It's not a. This isn't a subterfuge. I mean, the crime, as far as we're concerned, the crime was real. Oh, so you're going to yeah. sit me out on a stake, and I'm going to pretend to get away from you guys, or not actually hurt you. And when I do, I can, I can kill Emmett. The no crab. subterfuge is there for sure. No. No, I mean, I mean that we believe that your crime, that Richard's crime was real, that he okay. committed a, an actual crime. We're not pretending that he's a criminal. Okay. You're just pretending that you're going to enforce that with your giant Emmett crab. Okay. That's fine. We'll help. Hey, we'll, there, we'll do there it. There are going to be through. other criminals there too, and we gave, and I gave the, I'll give them this same exact speech, in private. Sure. I've given it many times. No one ever lives to tell about it. That is an interesting justice system you guys have. Very interesting. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So... So we just got called out on the carpet for being a bunch of murderers, and now he wants us to murder somebody. Are you telling that to us or to him? Told you, told I'm thinking you. to myself. I'm just oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere <laughs> we go, they're like, man, those guys will kill us. I'm just going to look at you guys and look at, at Richard and be like, all right. I, like I said, this is a really roundabout way of getting us to help them defeat this crab. Um, okay. All right. I'll do Could it. have just asked. Yeah. Well, he still thinks we're criminals, but I think... Have you guys been recruiting criminals just to see if they can help you guys get rid of this giant sea god? Well, we, we make this offer to every criminal. Right, right. That makes well, sense. Yeah. That makes More sense. criminals, yeah. the better. So any crime puts you in a, a, a position where you have to fight this, this crab god. Okay, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I got you, fam. All right, so we're going to fix that for you at our earliest convenience. What, right now? Uh, yes. We'll be, uh, we'll be heading over there. Beheading? We'll, we will be <laughs> heading over there. Rimshot. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, there, sometimes there are beheadings, but that's not, nothing to do with us. Is that foreshadowing? Beheadings. By a giant yeah. crab. I've heard this like Emmett the crab name before. Don't look at me. I don't like seafood. Maybe if Jonathan was here. And uh, at this point, uh, at this point, Huzzah Odell kind of says, you know, we've never agreed with this particular town's version of justice but we also made an agreement to not uh, interfere I've got an agreement never to go back to Patashkla <laughs> that will be just fine cliffhanger Woo! yeah alright I... sorry yeah that, that, that guy uh, I literally cannot cool. be in the space anymore I have to fucking get out of here okay all right. Stress well, all right. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.